Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to Plains People Podcast. This is coming out at you September 23rd. And I'm talking to Joey St. Germain. She grew up here in Fargo and then she moved down to Mexico to teach scuba diving and to be a scuba diver. I figured that was a awesome, cool story. How many people went from <laughs> North Dakota to uh, like a small island outside the Yucatan Peninsula to teach scuba diving? Knew her growing up in high school, so I figured... Perfect. I knew she was in town, so I, I was able to get a little bit of her time to do this interview. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So check it out. Here's the Plains People Podcast. My name is Mark Viglio, and we're talking to Joey St. Germain. Enjoy. Yeah, how's it going, Joey? It's going very well. How are you doing? Uh, I got Joey, and this is my first time I'm having two people. Do you want to say hi, other person? That's the cat. The cat, <laughs> the cat said hi. That was funny. Uh, no, we're not quite talking yet. Most of it's da, 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 you know. Uh, can you mind if I let the cat in? That's He's going to be attacking the door. Yeah, uh, let the cat in. We like cats. Come on in. You're in or out, dude. Of course. You carry a child for nine months, sustain them from your body, and their first word is dad, dad, dad. Yeah, I know, right? That's a, uh, yeah. that's a, that's a classic, I can't name the comedian anymore, but that's a classic comedian who I'm not allowed to quote anymore. One of them uh, <laughs> who made that joke, but, uh, but okay. Um, so, so we have Luna here. Luna. Nine yeah. months old. There she said something. Luna's going to talk to the cat. Capone is just freaking out. He's like, he's a, she's a human who's walking like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first baby he's seen. They're ca- they're hunting each other. I don't know if she's hunting. She looks like she's trying to make a friend. Okay, so we got Joey and Luna, uh, all the way up from Mexico. Mexico. Uh, but before we get to Mexico and Luna, let's start. I don't know if you've listened to one of these podcasts. Probably not. No one does. I listened to like half of one and then the baby freaked out. So okay. there's that. I believe that. My voice is very scary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think so, it was your voice. I think she just, she was hungry. So, uh, Joey, uh, how, what, what's your last name right now? St. Germain. And it's, actually, it's still St. It's Germain? Saint, it's St. Germain. In Mexico, when the women get married, they do not take their husband's last name. That their would names, be like a load off. Leslie's mine, my wife, because she had to take Gaviglio, which is super unfortunate for her. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate for her. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's pretty cool, because, I mean, down in Mexico, when the children are born, they get their father's father's name, okay. and they have their mother's last name as well. So my daughter's name is Luna Fay Hernandez St. Germain. Hernandez, okay. And St. Germain. And so when the women... Capone is just in a corner. And when the women get married, <laughs> they don't take their, their husband's name, which actually worked out really well for me because if I would have changed my name, I would have had to change my passport. Yeah. Change my immigration yeah, papers. Yeah, be, being from a different country, <sighs> it that would have been, been a huge headache. Yeah, it would have been It was a headache giant. anyways. Like, Leslie... It took her. It takes a while to yeah. Get you have to do. You have to like go to the court and do all the paperwork, and yeah, I, it would have been. I would have had to get a new passport. So I'm glad that that's like. It's still just saying. That's just how it is down there. Do, yeah. do you do you say your his so, last name at all when you introduce yourself? So like my name on Facebook is yeah. Joey Saint Germain de Hernandez. Uh-huh. So in social settings, I am Joey Saint Germain of the Hernandez family. Okay. So all right. But yeah, legally we don't take names, so it works out well for me. No, well, yeah, no, that works out perfect. Oh, I see when you poke up, I see long name that ends in Z, and I know it's you. I don't read it ever. So <laughs> I, I wasn't even sure if it was Hernandez. Right. It was just, boom, huge name. That's you. Yeah, my name was long enough already, and now I've got, like, the day Hernandez on the, know, on the back. I don't know. means a lot oh better God. than Gaviglio. Like, <laughs> and it sucks because well, I'm not, like, super Italian. I'm only, like... Like my ancestors are. I don't yeah. identify as an Italian person, so I constantly am like, "Hi, I'm Italian," but not really. It, yeah. And then Leslie, it's even worse. She's not Italian at all. Now she has to be a good. Now she now she has the last name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my last name is French, but Saint Germain is super confusing for. I thought it was German for the Mexicans. I well, my mom's side of the family is German, but Saint Germain is French. Their soccer team is actually called Saint Germain. Oh really? Yeah. Oh well. There you go. Learn well, I know about saints. <laughs> I know Soccer, the German right? ones from the French ones. <laughs> uh, Luna has literally terrified Capone into a chair, and he's hiding from her and just staring. He might attack, honestly. He is a jerk. If he 
But he doesn't. He doesn't got any. He doesn't weapons. have the nails, so we're cool. Yeah. So, but she it might be a bat own. in the head. That's fine. She's she bit our cat. We have two cats down <laughs> in Mexico. My husband had a cat before we got together, and I had a cat before we got together. They don't get along. Okay, it's, that's great. It's horrible. I feel really bad for my little cat because his cat is super sweet, but he's bigger, so he chases it yeah. around. You know. And I feel you. Anyway, so my daughter stuck one cat's tail in her mouth and chomped. And no, she didn't chomp. I mean, but the cat was like, let go of my tail and smashed her in the face. Oh. She didn't get scratched or anything, but it scared her. Kitten. So she knows. You know that cats can swat, right? Sure hope so. Hey. She might learn. <laughs> Again. Okay. He is like, literally, he wants to back up even more. He is so afraid. I can't wait to have a kid now just to put him in his place. He, yeah, he, uh, the newest cat of the household, Teddy is the older cat and he immediately dominated him. Yeah, like, as a kitten, he beat the crap out of the old cat, and now the old cat is is super submissive. Even always has really? been. He's a scaredy cat. That's Anyways. Interesting. You probably won't see Teddy because he's a he's scaredy shy. cat to begin with, but Capone being so aggressive, Teddy's even more like, like, uh, so he'll just sit there and just let Capone beat the crap oh, out of him. poor Teddy. I know. I feel bad for Teddy. And that being said, he's now taken Leslie at being the king of the household. So I'm under him, and he, if I sit down and Leslie sits down, Capone sits on Leslie. Oh, you're yanking down stuff. It's fine. Nothing's fucked up. It's going to be loud. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so let, Capone will sit on Leslie and stare at me like he won. Like, like he's like, mine. this is mine now. <laughs> and then Teddy like sits on me and we salt. My, my like, human. We used to have Leslie. That's <laughs> but, funny. Cats are funny. Yeah. And some people say that cats like don't have personalities. Well, and they never had a house cat then. Because oh my God. outdoor cats. I grew crazy. up with, with cats that go outside and inside. And I never got the personality. But once you lock a cat inside, you oh, really, uh -huh. you feel the personality 100%. There's a, yeah, that's, I mean, I just, I like to imprison animals that are lesser than me just to make them more, uh, you know, entertaining, I guess. It was a horrible <laughs> sentence I said as a joke, you're too busy staring at your kid, which is Sorry. fine. You're allowed to look at your kid. <laughs> All right, uh, let's actually start this podcast. So we were, um, where'd you grow up? Fargo. Fargo. You actually, you're well, from Fargo? Well, okay, so I was born in Fargo, and okay. we lived in... We'll try not with the sorry, tagging. Sorry. That's going to be I was born in Fargo, and we, my parents lived in an apartment. I, when I was like three, we moved to Moorhead. Okay. And I went to kindergarten and first grade in Moorhead. Do something. We should actually start putting our beers other places. Um, oh, because every time we put it up in yeah. here, right? Uh, can you, there's a ledge. Can you put oh, it right yeah. there? There you go. Perfect. Sweet. All right. I wasn't listening because I was too busy solving the beer problem. Okay. Ready, set. Yeah. Born in Fargo, went to elementary school in Moorhead, okay. and then my parents got divorced, and then I moved up to Longfellow. How old were you when they got divorced? Grade. Um, yeah, second. I don't know. Like That's the same time as me, pretty much. Yeah. I came, yeah, I came into the Fargo Moorhead area second grade from Brainerd. Uh huh. So that's when the divorce got kind of final. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got married at when I was two, and they got separated when I was three, and they didn't get a divorce until mom's like, "Well, we're going to North Dakota, so sign see you something. later." Yeah. Oh, sucky. Well, he, yeah, yeah, you was, know, I'm divorce. not going to comment on that marriage. It wasn't going. <laughs> well, in that case, it was yeah. I love sometimes, that day. Sometimes divorce leads to good things. Well. I, I've, I've never been anti-divorce at all. Like, talk about saying to me marriage all you want. It doesn't really matter too much to me because if two people are... Are not are, happy. Yeah, if they're not happy and being separate is going to make both of them happy, then separate. Like, what do you, why are you suffering for no reason? It makes yeah. no sense to me. So, I agree yeah. with that. I agree yeah. with that. Um, this is, I actually do have a happy marriage. That wasn't like a... Like, me too. Yeah. And I never <laughs> thought I was going to get married. Like... That was not because you got married the second you met him. That's how it seemed on yeah. Facebook. <laughs> pretty pretty <laughs> well, much. We'll, we'll get to that. We we haven't even made it out of Fargate yet. Uh, what did your parents do as jobs? I have always my okay. So my dad and we definitely can't forget to do the selfie. We forgot before we started. Oh, yeah, we we definitely can't selfie, selfie selfie. Yeah, we have to do selfie before you leave. Okay. Yeah, Luna can be part In of my it brain. If you Yay! Want. Yeah, she's so cute. I know. It'll that's be the why. Best part. It'll get me more clicks. All right. Okay. So what did your parents do? <laughs> My dad is a scientist inventor. What? He owns yes, he he owns a company called Dakota Technologies. Okay. So basically, um he does when, technology in Dakota. Yes, he does technology in Dakota. <laughs> when when there is um 
contamination in the ground, like oil mm -hmm. or gasoline leaks or yeah. whatever, they need to make maps of that contamination so that they can make a plan to clean it up. Well, what they used to do, or what they still do normally, is they do probes in different areas, they take samples, they send those samples to a lab, they analyze those samples inch by inch, and then they put all that information into a computer, and two, three months later, you have a map. Okay. What my dad did was he realized that different contaminants reflect light differently, and so he used lasers, put a laser in a oh, drill, what? and hooked the laser up to a computer, made a program, and so they send this drill down into the ground, the laser shooting the light out, and the light's coming back, and it's being captured by a camera, which is feeding that information into a computer, and it makes a 3D map on site. Whoa. So my dad compressed months of work into like into here you go. instant. Yeah. Holy crap! My dad doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he literally does not do much. Yeah, he, my dad. He works for a couple of years and then quits for a couple of years and rides off the money he saved and then gets a job again. So he does many retirements and he's been doing that since I was a kid. Where That's... half my life he's been like unemployed and the other half he's been like working and saving every penny so he could just be unemployed again for a couple of years. That's interesting. Pretty much the opposite. Opposite, yeah. <laughs> My dad is a very, very, very smart and a very hard worker, and so he's sold machines all over the world, actually. So cool. And then, so he has to train people how to use the machines when they break and they can't figure it out. He has to go fix them. He does. Yeah. A couple months ago, I don't know the name of the magazine, but one of his um, machines. Yeah was on the cover of a magazine and he had a big article and I guess it's like the lead magazine in his field. So he's like, he's a, he's you a know, deal. I should have been talking field. to him. Yeah. No wonder yeah, why he's he, super he, smart. Remember he was I, like, I should ask him if he would do a podcast. No, I, I, I get now why he was judging me for having you on. Yeah. Cause I'm <laughs> like, well, clearly he's the, he's, he's the, the interesting, he's yeah. the interesting one of the family. I, I yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him you said so. And he'll yeah. laugh. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Hi Luna. She just go to town on those toys. Yeah, should be good. Um, she does keep looking at me as she like eats things. So I have yeah, to, she's chewing I on. Keep I, what is that? It was on your floor. That's not one of oh, her toys. Was it? I don't know. It's like a. We'll see. It's like a shiny. It's <laughs> well, a shiny thing. I, don't know. I think it's part of a broken cat toy, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah, okay. I don't know what's happening. Cats and children are entertained by the same sorts of things. I, I have nerds in here. Anything can be on the floor. We'll see. It's in my nerd room, my game room. Um, last night, my uh, mom in law stayed in here, so it's it's a very uh, whatever. Uh, it's a a versatile. Room. Versatile. There you go. Versatile. Um. So now I'm afraid to ask what your mom did because now that you got like this like great awesome story for your dad, you're gonna be like, she's a server, you know, <laughs> like or something. She's a server. My mom, when I was younger, she was a para ed at um, Moorhead High, and oh. so that was interesting. Sometimes so education for like special yeah, needs yeah, children. Special yeah, people. so she was the para. -ed. I had a lot of those teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I was in all the developmental classes. Oh, Luna's ready to talk now. Yeah, hi Luna. Now you were quiet. At least two people are going to listen to this podcast and hear your voice. So, um, my mom did that, and then when they got divorced, she started taking, like, you know, school pictures? Mm -hmm. But she started traveling around and doing it in other small schools. Oh, cool. So she did school pictures, portraits, and then she married my stepdad. Yeah, and naturally, that's how it goes. Yeah, that's yeah. how it goes. She yeah. got married to my stepdad, and he owned a marina in western North Dakota. Oh, so that's actually how the scuba diving okay. evolved. Yeah. So I like to make the joke, like sometimes people, you know, when they break up or there's a relationship ending or they lost their job or whatever, you know, like seems like the end of the world. Well, if my parents hadn't divorced, you my mom, probably wouldn't yeah, exactly. diving my mom, at all. My mom never would have married my stepdad it's... and I never would have gotten the chance to become a scuba diver. They took me to Mexico on vacation for scuba diving and that's They're, how and that all evolved. Everything. Wow. Yeah. Is your dad mad that you didn't get into lasering the ground and got into what your stepdad did instead? <laughs> it was it was funny in Talk about the, the in high school I had to take chemistry twice because yeah. it was like not my thing, you know. And he's like, "Are you my child?" You know, Maybe. he made made the joke. And I'm we'll like, see. I don't know. I was not. I don't have a scientist brain. Yeah. Yeah, I was always better at English and art classes than I was at science and math. Mm -hmm. so. you yeah, Luna. To? Should I ask Luna a question? Yeah. So what have you accomplished in the nine months that you've been alive? So I'm really, really good at just grabbing your face, nursing, and doing. sticking my fingers in my mother's nose. It was actually a talent. You could, 
you can get a living off of, uh, <laughs> of, of nose picking. Nose picking? Yeah. Are you going to be a professional nose picker? Yeah, no one's that? ever done that. No one's ever picked somebody's nose for money before. If you get really good at it, you can you make it. She's hey. practicing. Yeah. Charge for the booger. Her booger. Uh, anyways, uh, this is already a good one. And now we got... I feel like Capone is representing me. Like, you got a little thing walking around, and he's and like, Capone right, is your <laughs> make sure I don't get outnumbered. This is my little minion, and that's your little minion. Although he has not got off that chair. No, he's, he's still... just watching. <laughs> he's observing the baby. Like, he's what? still afraid. <laughs> what uh, is that? Okay. It's a um, human. So let's move on past... Let's actually get to your life. So we, we've now covered what your parents do. And I keep putting the beer on the table, and I told you not to do that. I haven't been. I know. Yeah, You've been doing good. My beer's on the shelf. So, uh, yeah, I guess we don't have to, we can skip right into what you already covered. So you started scuba diving via your, so what, like a marina, like he had like. Yeah, he had um, 80 slips in a bay of Lake Sakakawea. Mm. And, um, I mean, there was everything from small fishing boats to bayliner yachts, yeah. sailboats. The biggest boat, I believe, was 84. Five foot bay liner. Okay. So I mean, people always laugh, and they're like, "There's a there's boats that big in North Dakota." I mean, and Lake Sakakawea is actually a really, really big lake. Yeah. Well, so it's a big put, like snake lake. It's yeah, not and super, they put it's they, like a super thick river. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what they did was they built the Garrison Dam yep. to generate electricity, mm -hmm. and then that made a man made lake. Um, like uh, Missouri, right? Is yep, it's, it's in Missouri. I've never been to Lake Sakakawea. So. It's really pretty, actually. I bet. And it's super. In some in some places, it's over it. two hundred feet deep. Oh wow! It's, if you stretch out all of the shoreline, it actually has more shoreline than the state of California. Wow! It's big. When yeah. you look on a map, it's big. Well, like people I said, don't yeah, even know it exists out there. It's, it's like snakes. Very, well, it, yeah, yeah very it runs. It runs with the river. river, right? Yeah. So what used to be a river bed is now it's the lake. Yeah. Super. Thick river, yeah. Yeah, so my stepdad had a guy um, out of Bismarck, North Dakota, that was a scuba diver who helped him do all the underwater cable work of oh, the docks. cool. And so he was an instructor and also worked professionally mm -hmm. um, as a diver. And my mom started chatting with his wife, just, you know, getting to know them mm -hmm. through the marina. And they were telling my mom, oh, well, we go on a trip to Mexico every year. And my mom has always loved the water. Yeah. And when I was growing up, she had, I don't know if you know the artist Wyland. He does these giant uh, spray paintings and, like, murals on, on walls of marine life. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, so Wyland, cool. she, she had a Wyland, like, coffee book table. Oh. And she, my mom always liked marine life and stuff like that. So she saw these pictures and these videos that uh, Pete and Sharon Rentschler would take on their trips to Mexico. And mm -hmm. my mom got interested, and my stepdad noticed that. So they're, um, I guess, a couple Christmases. After they got married, he got scuba lessons for me and my mom for Christmas. And so my first time scuba I was 12. Wow. The tank was almost bigger than I was. We have a picture. It's super funny. I have my knees locked in this picture, and it's, mm -hmm. like, sideways. And I had knee problems, like, a couple of years ago. And I'm like, no wonder. Yeah. I was walking around with my knees all locked with a yeah, giant tank on my back. Tank. Yeah. Yeah. So they tossed me in the pool. And at the end of that first lesson, um... He asked me, are you holding your breath? Because one of the rules of scuba is to never, ever, ever hold your breath, right? Because yeah. you can have lung expansion injuries. Okay. I don't so know that, never, but, but well, you can. Me. I've never scuba by the way. It's so perfect. I'm a good audience to learn. If you if you ever want to come visit, <laughs> any and anybody listening, too, I'm an instructor. So you guys can come come to Mexico, take a vacation, learn how to scuba with Joey. Uh, yeah, we don't really we don't really make it outside of the town much, let alone... <laughs> no, let like, alone outside of the country? We, yeah, it's like a big deal. We're going to go see Primus in Sioux Falls in like less than two weeks. I know the exact day because I've been hunting it down on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an actually 11 days, by the way. Um, and, uh, and that's like a huge deal. Like, we're like, what? We're going to Sioux Falls? We have to stay at a hotel? Holy crap. Like, I'm Your so excited. Bodies. Yeah. Uh, she is, and I'm, you know, I work all the time, so, and, yeah. and it's I hard, get a, It's hard to get away. Yeah, and I got a, I got a lot of days off, but since my, my work days are so long, and I have about 80 hobbies, this being one of one them, of them. Uh, I, most of my days, even when they're off, I have them all planned. I'll, I'll get a week off from work, and I'll, I'll have something for every single day, and then the days that I don't, I want to veg and do nothing so yeah. we don't really get out much uh and she yeah she's about the same <laughs> so that's good you yeah. guys make a good couple then something like that i mean we, <laughs> we've been together for six years and 
That's, That's insane. impressive. Yeah. Um, I'm impressed. Well, me too, considering I, one of the people was me. So, <laughs> <laughs> literally 50% of the relationship is insane. So I'm surprised it's worked. Um, but anyways, so what year did you head down there? Would be what? 2000, I want to say 12. Yes. Good Boom, guess. Nailed it. Yes. This November will be my six year anniversary mm. living in Mexico. Wow. Nice. So, yeah, so just a little bit after I met Leslie. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember that. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I remember when you left. Um, so you moved down there specifically to teach scuba diving, right? I moved down there to take my course. Okay. So when I moved there, I was an open water diver. So that just means that I had taken the course and was certified. You have, like, a little card with your yeah. picture and your certification number and you know, you feel really fancy when you get that first card. And that just basically says that you know enough about scuba diving to go diving by yourself. Not by yourself, with a buddy. Yeah. And without an but instructor. But without an instructor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I moved down there and I was in open water. Um, then the next step is advanced, which advanced, depending on, there's different companies that do scuba certification. Mm -hmm. There's Paddy, there's Nowie. There's a whole bunch of So depending of on who it worlds. is. There's a, yeah, exactly. But more or less, it's usually open water, advanced, rescue, dive master. And then there's also master diver. Master diver is kind of for like old people who like collecting like ma certification. Like master chef. Like, like I've mastered every single type of cooking. Exactly. So you don't really need a master chef. Just need a, need a guy who knows what he's doing and what you're making. Yeah, like, exactly. Doesn't make your burger taste better if the guy has studied it's French exactly food or anything. <laughs> Yeah, because there's only a couple master chefs, and I called my my uh, my brother in law and my sister have, have a restaurant. restaurant yeah, right? for yeah. ransom. He's actually my next interviewee. Is I'm mm. talking to him, which That'll is going to be, be cool. great because I actually don't know a lot about him, even though he's my brother in law. Because we only you, you never don't, get a chance to just sit down and yeah, ask people questions. Never like this, right? br pick anyone's life apart. It doesn't happen much, and it's weird in a normal setting. Like, so what your parents do? You can't just say that at a bar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, but uh. But he was telling, because I called him a master chef because he's really good. And he's like, dude, there's like three in the whole world. And he explained it to me. And I was like, but what's the point? Like, just to be cocky at that point? That's pretty much what the master diver, <laughs> diver is. Same thing. Yeah, you like. I've dived in all the waters. Yeah, exactly. It's all and water. And so then these, these people, you know, they kind of get this. I mean, not all of them, obviously. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but. The they majority like of, the, of the master divers that I met think that they're better than you because they are master divers. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's, it's but I interesting. Mean, sure that you got more hours diving. So that's, Yeah, right. And experience yeah. is really, really what cuts. And the most interesting thing about scuba diving is it's constantly evolving. They're still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, you can never know everything. Yeah. It's just, you could spend your whole life diving and meeting people and constantly learning about the new... I mean, every six months, there's some kind of new equipment. And yeah. you're never going to see it all unless if you're super And super there's rich. also then different types of diving. Yeah, exactly. For that. Yeah, um, there's tech diving, there's recreational diving, yeah. there's all kinds of and rescue there's diving. The, the crazy people who go down with on a tank and spearfish. Apnea, yes. Yeah. yeah. I just wa listened to a whole Joe Rogan with a spear fisherman who was talking and... She was talking about, you know, diving for five minutes in spearing fish. And I'm just like... Well, what are you talking Like, I could never, like, just me and a spear, and there's, like, sharks around. And she's like, usually they mind their own business. They it's usually like, do. That's true. I would true. crap myself if a fish bigger than me swam by me at all. I'd be like, all right, guys, uh, they're now going to know where I'm at because <laughs> there's feces near me. And especially if you're not wearing anything, like, they do that in, like, just, like, nothing but, like, their bikinis. In a yeah. Moment. I guess I have a spear. <laughs> Which you don't have a spear, or maybe, maybe you carry a spear. We actually, okay, so it depends on what you're doing. If I'm instructing, I'm not mm. carrying a spear because I'm teaching people. I don't yeah. need to be spearing <laughs> things. But if I'm just diving Imagine for fun. any teacher having a weapon. <laughs> like, I don't feel yeah. comfortable you teaching me that. Can you put down your spear, please? Oh, is that exciting? We're going to talk about spearing lionfish for a second. So okay. we have lionfish. In yeah. the Caribbean. And they're apparently all over, right? They're yeah. And they, yeah, they are a problem. It's an invasive species. So yeah. nobody really knows how they ended up. Oh, bless you. Yeah, nobody you knows how they ended up in, in the Caribbean Some waters. Some jerk let one go from a pet store. Or there's like all these theories, right? That's yeah. one of them. There's another theory that a, a, 
a tank broke in a hurricane in, in Florida. Oh, right. And there's another theory of like, well, the ballast in, in the cruise ships, yeah. you know, that cross ocean, stuff like that. Who knows? Anyways, it happened. So essentially, it's like when the rabbits got to Australia. So it's an animal that doesn't have a natural predator. Exactly. Right? There's, yeah. Okay. There's, so there's no fish that will naturally eat a lionfish. So yet. what we have to... Yeah, exactly. Yet. <laughs> Eventually, the groupers, I'm pretty sure, will figure it out. Because when you, once you spear them and there's blood in the water, the groupers will come, the triggers will come, yeah. even little races, uh, lobsters, eels. You can feed the lionfish to all those kind of animals. So it's actually kind of fun. Oh. And, and I mean, like, <laughs> I don't particularly like, you know, killing things, but if I'm protecting... Yeah, my so reef, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, different. It's, yeah. it's just like... A, an, an adult lionfish can eat up to like 20 juvenile fish a day. So mm. if there's a bunch of lionfish all over the reef, they're just gobbling up all... And they're just decimating whole reef systems. Wow. So yeah. it, it is a problem. So, and, so it, yeah, you're, you're by killing an animal, you're not killing an animal, you're also protecting that whole area. And they're actually really it. good to eat. Yeah, no, yeah. I've seen that. So I've now, heard that there's people who are, are totally making a thing on feet yeah. like eating that. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite um, restaurants in Cozumel is called New Especia, so that's New Spices. Okay. And the chef is Italian. He was born and raised in Rome. Okay. And he, I don't know, learned how to cook there, obviously. Yeah. And so he's really cool, and he serves lionfish on his menu. So he nice. has fishermen that go out every day and catch lionfish, and he, you know, serves until he runs out, and almost every day he oh, runs out. and really good for the environment good yeah. for for local good. food sourcing yeah you know so it's cool um and they're really, like we're, really delicious we're skipping a lot so um how many like were you would you call yourself i think a, where we were was me moving to mexico yep. and, and i got a couple questions on that so okay. before you actually started diving in mexico have you dived a lot before or were you would you call yourself a novice i was a novice when i moved so down there. how yeah. scary is that of something that you kind of like doing and you're like hey i'm totally banking everything on me wanting to do this yeah it was like right away it was it was a little freaky like to do some of the coursework that you have to do to be a dive master you need to be completely comfortable obviously mm -hmm. so a dive master you can't teach people but you can guide people yeah. So I did the dive master course first and like where I live, part of the waters are a national marine park. So you have to have a guide that takes a course to be able to dive in that marine park. So basically okay. that limits the number of people uh -oh. that limits the number of people on the reef being in the, co in the, in the park. And then it also helps protect the park because there's somebody watching people making sure they're not breaking coral. They're not yeah. breaking things, yeah. stuff like that. So well, it was very fragile. Yeah. So to be a dive master, you potentially could end up saving somebody's life if something goes mm -hmm. wrong, things like that. So you have to be super comfortable in the water. So part of the course was taking your mask off and swimming without your mask. Yeah. And I hated it. I really, really, really hated it. It totally psyched me out. My instructor knew that I hated it, and so he just made me do it over. And over. Which is probably Every the best way yeah, to do exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And now I can take my mask off. No big deal. Totally comfortable. I can get my mask back on. So, I mean, it's just repetition. But so, it's, that, yeah, so that, that whole really thing psyched is being... me out. I freaked myself out. Like, oh, my God. Okay. <sighs> yeah. You can do it. Don't panic. Don't. And this is, like, don't diving water like that nose. and everything of, like, like, like not going really... up and down, but, oh. like, in, the, in one of the courses, um, in the rescue course, you have to swim for 50 feet with your mask off. Okay. You know. And, and then I, the instructor's right there with you the whole time. I could walk 50 feet. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... There's just like you have to you have to get over that. And then when I did finally eventually get all the courses done and I started working in the industry, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's amazing and oh. I get to go diving every How day, but it really you? kicks your ass. Um, I did the coursework really slow. I traveled a little bit. I was okay. pretty relaxed, but I think it was like a year. Okay. But so. you can do it really. There's even like there's schools down in Florida that you can go do it open water to instructor in Two, three months. So how are you making money while you're doing that? I wasn't making money. Okay. I was actually blessed enough that when I was little, my grandma bought me and my cousin cows. Oh, and then every time nice. those cows had babies, they put they sold the calves and put the money in an account. Okay, so and you had, so when I graduated college That is the most normal no, when I graduated yeah, yes, type of nest egg. Came from a cow. I got a nest egg for my cow yeah. babies. No, so when I graduated from high school my grandma's, okay, you're 18, you know, you have access to this money, you do what you want with it, I prefer you use it as an education, so I did go to one year at NDSU, just studying general. I remember that, yeah. wasn't my thing, I didn't go to class, I didn't want to 
really be in college and I didn't know what I wanted to study. So, yeah, so I honestly really, shouldn't, yeah. I shouldn't have gone. But it was like, you know, that's what everybody does. Everybody right? has college regrets. Yeah. So, Even people who got their degree, there's at least a year they spent <laughs> yeah. on like film theory and they regret it. Yeah. So <laughs> that fun. first year I actually ended up on academic probation. And after that I was like, okay, I'm just wasting my money. I don't know what I want to do. So I'm not going to, okay. not going to do this to myself. So for a while after high school, I was working as a, uh, at a daycare and I really like that I like kids which turned out well because now I'm a mom yeah because now you got one yeah literally on your one. lap right now yes I have one here in my arms but um yeah so I had this money that I didn't oh, really last start. thing I want you to touch Luna don't right. touch the phone you can, you can play with everything in this room but not the phone <laughs> so yeah I had this money that I used for college and then didn't really use until I decided that I wanted to pursue diving as a professional. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I used to move down there to take my coursework. And here's an interesting part of my story. So okay, sweet. We finally before, got to one. <laughs> shut up. Before, before I moved there, I had researched, you know, you're moving to another country, right? So what about work? Can I work legally? Can mm -hmm. I live there legally? I'm on a tourist visa. What do I have to do? Yeah. I want a student visa. So I would researched all of this. And what I learned was that you need to prove that you have enough money to support yourself to apply for a student visa. Okay. So I went into immigration when I got there and I had my bank statements and I had my paperwork and I had my, my thing saying that I was going to be taking the course. So mm -hmm. I wanted to apply for a student visa so I could be there until I finished my courses. Yeah. I get there. I flew in November 13th. I don't remember what day of the week, but anyways, I went to the immigration the next week. And I have my whole folder, and I'm all like, hi, I want to apply for a visa. I have all my stuff I need. And, and you thought like, you were going to nail it? Yeah, I yeah. was totally ready. I had everything. I had copies of my birth certificate and my social security card and my passport and all this stuff filled out from the Mexican uh, embassy website, all this stuff. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. The law changed November 12th. You now have to apply from your home country. So, like, on your way there, yeah, it dude. changed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what? 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 So that's why you came, I remember you came back. Yeah, that, for like that, four months. That's when I was, so I did my courses. Um, I was supporting myself with that money I had. Thank God I had that money, right? Yeah. Oh, what a, what a mess it would have been if, if I hadn't. So I did my dive master course and I found a job. I found a, so then what I had to do was I had to find somebody as a company to sponsor me because I couldn't get my student visa. Yeah. Well, I could have, but I would have had to move home, wait for it to process and then come back. And I'd already sold all my stuff, moved down to Mexico with my dog already paid for my course, was ready to start with my instructor. So it was like not really an option to go back. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, what do I do? So I take my courses and I'm not working, right? And I'm like, okay, well, this sucks, but whatever. So what I had to do was find a company to sponsor me. Well, getting a company to sponsor you when you don't have any experience mm -hmm. is hard. I yeah. mean, I was, I literally like just finished my course, yeah. was doing my course when I started looking you know, well, I'm doing the dive master course now. And they're like, no, we need people with experience. I'm not hiring you. And, and also I'm not gonna... you say you come from a landlocked state. Yeah, exactly. North... Landlocked state in North Dakota. I don't yeah. know anything, yeah. basically. And I also didn't speak Spanish, which well, I which took Spanish in high school, but I only took like one semester and I got... I'm like, assuming you're pretty good at it now. Yeah. Now, kind of have to be. Sí, ahora puedo hablar español. Ahora sí. But then I didn't know anything. Like I mm. knew like baño, bathroom, cerveza, beer. That was pretty much the extent. I know of what uh, what you learn in Pulp Fiction when he says they want to go and live in Mexico and he teaches her like three lines in Spanish. So yeah. I know Kiora S, which is what time it is, uh -huh. and what time is it? And then I think I know. I'm gonna ruin it, but I they also say where's the bathroom. So it's something so like baño. oh really? It was Sepacaria or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, see? And that's probably not even right. Only Quentin Tarantino has taught me two lines, and I don't even remember them, and they're probably not even right. <laughs> so that's all I would have known. I would have had nothing. Co coma estas, a pacaria, or like something. Is coma estas is like, how are you? Yeah, okay. So it'd be like, how are the somethings? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What Quentin Tarantino, about. you lied to me. All right. Uh, so, so what you're saying is, so, yeah, you're trying to get a company to sponsor you, you didn't. You, your resume hard. isn't huge. It's not like you did a lot of diving in North Dakota, yeah. and then you don't even know the language. Yeah, so I finally get a company to sponsor me and doing videos, underwater videos. So people come okay. down, they dive, and they want a, a keepsake. Everybody right? does. Yeah, yeah that's so the whole point. Yeah. So basically, I would follow along and make videos, run home, edit them, 
and then bring them on a disc to people who were in Cosmelon for the day on cruise ships. Okay. So, uh, I should ask first, so uh, where you're at is an island, right? Yes. Have you been to that exact spot? This That's where you've been this whole time? You haven't moved yep. around? No, I haven't lived anywhere else. So where is that? I've vacationed a little bit. So Cozumel is an island off the Yucatan Peninsula. Which is, yeah, where the mines are from. So that like little mines. bottom yes, horn exactly. of Mexico. I know that so recently where, because I've looked at Mayan history recently. Oh, Mayan interest. It's very, very interesting. So yeah. Cozumel is actually the island of Ixchel. Okay. And Ixchel was the goddess of fertility and of the moon. Mm. So it's fitting that that's where I got pregnant and had a baby. Yeah, and <laughs> you became a moon too. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so... So Ixchel um, was the goddess of Cozumel, and the Mayans actually used to make a sacred journey every spring. And if the women of the Mayan communities wanted to get pregnant and wanted to have healthy children, they would travel to Cozumel oh. and go to the temple and pray. And, and these that, little like, wooden canoes, yeah. Oh, well, they, yeah. Did it work, you know? Apparently. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, still, good. they're still Mayans. So yeah. it apparently Is there? Worked. I yes, thought they, there I thought they all got out. I thought no, that was and, a big thing. And, and cause, well, I mean... Yeah, they're, they're like, whole... Their civilization class. Yeah, their civilization class, but there are Mayans. And oh, okay. Cozumel cool. is, is, has a very strong Mayan community. Yeah. That's they awesome. still A lot of them still wear traditional dress. Many of them sp still speak Mayan. I don't know. I know, like, Peshkowali, and that's like, what's up in Mayan? In Mayan? Yep. And, yeah, and you need to know. say what's up to, like, Mayans often. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. my, my Mayan. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting, and um, there's really, really good Mayan food, like cochinita pibil is Mayan, and it's like a, basically like a pork roast that they cook in the ground on, on stones all night long, Okay, and it's yeah. with um, achiote, which is a uh, red, a red herb. I'm going to ask you to come a little closer to oh, the phone. sorry. I'm you backed it. out as far and away I'm from quiet. my end, and that was the whole point. Yeah, was, sorry. You need to be close to it. Oh, so, no, it's fine. Hello. I mean microphone, not normal phone. I'm a professional. Microphone. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I love getting, I'm so bad at getting sidetracked. I'm supposed to, like, run the interview, and I'm, like, the worst at it. Squirrel! Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, so um, let's flip to, so you finally did get a company to sponsor you. Yeah, so I got a company to sponsor me, but to do that, they had to write a letter to immigration saying that, you know, we want to hire this woman because she has these things that we can't find in a local. And it was basically my English and they lied a little bit and said I was going to be doing so they, administrative they had your back. things. Yeah, they completely. Had yeah, your so back. they they helped me out a lot actually. That's awesome. And but I had to come back and be in my country of origin while it was processing, uh, and that took like four months. That sucked. So yeah, that totally sucked because I had a boyfriend at that time. I had my You're dog was there. All back there. Yeah, in yeah. Mexico, and I had to come back up here, like move back into my high school room in my dad's basement that was kind of weird and then the, there's that stage of transition where everyone's like so did it work and you're like it works just give I'm me just, four months yeah exactly my, my visa is pending guys not like i didn't up on fail the yeah <laughs> uh, that would yeah it was really and it was weird because it was like i didn't really feel like i could like go get a job for four months right well i did work a little bit my friend marina's family owns a a cleaning company so i helped her yeah like bit. yeah so that was really nice that i could get some extra cash and not be bored out of my skull yeah. so while i was up here i actually was super bored and decided you know what i'm just gonna go do the instructor course it right. was like 500 dollars cheaper to do it in florida than it would have been to do it down in mexico so then you went down to florida yeah so then i went down to florida and i went to key largo to a place called which is actually a pretty good yeah. idea i'm glad you thought of that <laughs> like yeah, yeah screw it, it. Was i got four months yeah, i got let's four months let's go let's go do it so I went to Ocean Divers and, in Key Largo, Florida, and did the instructor course. And that's like a super intensive, I think it was two or three weeks. I don't even remember. This yeah. was in like 2014. And um, yeah, did my instructor course. They actually offered me a job at the dive shop where I did the course. But I was like, oh, I'm waiting on my visa. And I got a job down in Mexico. And they were like, oh, well, if you ever decide you want to come to Florida, you can come work here anytime. So there's always my ba That's my backup it's, plan. If all things I'm, go to hell, I can I'm go to Florida. Like I'm, I'm surprised at the ballsiness of like, oh, the much easier thing to do exactly what I want to do there, and I'm going to be an American, I don't have to worry about the visa or different languages. Yeah. No, screw you, I'm going now. <laughs> well, you know, I I really like Cozumel, and I really, I mean... Well, there, there is just something whole, so romantic and amazing about, no, screw it, I'm going down to this paradise to live. And it's a like, whole other world, too. Yeah. They're so much more relaxed... And yeah, that's going to be my questions coming up. Is I'm just going to ask about that yeah, place once we get to it. Culturally, it's it's totally different, and I like it. Luna, how do you like it? 
No, nothing. First time you're quiet. Hey, punch her! Punch her in the face! Yeah. <laughs> she just smacked you yeah, right in the face. Yeah, she gets super excited and flails her arms around. And That's how I get this excited. Is funny. I flail. Is that funny? So you're saying that uh, the culture is so different that there isn't a basement full of comic books and toys that somebody's doing a podcast in? Yeah. Or is there? Though well, there's no basements because it's lime rock. <laughs> oh, yeah. So well, no that's basement. why there was so much lime. Uh, the funny thing about lime rock is I at the factory, I do actually make lime. We cook lime rock there, and I know that oh, was yeah. a big thing that the yeah. Mayans did. But, of course, they didn't have, uh, you know safety regulations <laughs> or anything or probably <laughs> yeah. not as much yeah maybe they're like hey don't eat it and that was probably it but uh but yeah i i, I read a huge thing about the mayans and, and how uh it was possibly not that we know a lot of what was going on but possibly the way they were getting rid of their their lime was destroying the topsoil and it made me very interesting it made me very interested because we get rid of it by adding it to a pro the process of making sugar, because uh -huh. I work on a sugar yeah. bee plant, and then we take out all the lime afterwards, and we go and, like, put it over the soil in a very small amount, and it actually helps. Helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but of course, the way they were doing it was probably just so much of just destroying the topsoil, because they probably had no that clue that it was destroying yeah. it. Yeah, which is, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, there's a little bit of Mayan history stories, too. All right. Um, there's a reason I don't have a history podcast. Uh, but, all right, uh, so where are we at? You finally, so you're in Florida, and you finally moved down once you got, that yep. four months came up, you got your visa, and now you have a different certification? Too. Yep, so then I returned as an instructor, but yeah. I had gotten a job doing videos. And you need the, you need the, you need the experience, right? Yeah. So as, as a videographer... You're diving the reefs and you're watching well, dive I'm sure masters it wasn't working. Horrible. I'm no, sure it was awesome. Being big, you're yeah, still being a diving and you're super still super awesome. Yeah, it's actually you know, I enjoy instructing and I enjoy dive mastering, but doing videos is way more fun. Yeah, well, you, you don't have to worry to, about it. Either. Yeah, you you're to not. Hang out yeah, you're not day. responsible for people's safety. Yeah, <laughs> you're not responsible for the safety of the reef and the marine animals and you just and you get to you get to so you make... get to just destroy it screw it <laughs> no i'm gonna be for today i'm gonna yeah. throw my beer can here <laughs> <laughs> no i meant i meant like you're not responsible for making sure that your divers aren't mm -hmm. destroying things um and it's really fun because you get to make a, a keepsake for people and you get to watch people having fun yeah 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 and i really and i you get to be a large happy spot of their vacation is yeah, exactly. hey this is something you really want uh -huh. Sweet. yeah so it was really fun um so i did that for geez almost two years wow um it ended kind of on a sour note oh it was a little it's it's hard being a female in that business okay it's really hard and especially being an american female yeah i bet it's just hard being an american was the question i was gonna ask right away i mean they do they accept you but it's also there's always when that you're stigma yeah, in the back of your that's, head. That's, yeah. There's stigma, and then they always assume that I'm just made of money, which I'm definitely not. <laughs> I was lucky enough to move down there with that little nest egg, which you, I you used. Had I pretty much used it all. I've still got some saved away, which was useful when I had the, my daughter. Mm. But um, I mean, I'm not like super rich. They just assume that because you're white, that you just come yeah. with a lot of money, and it's which, not which, true. Let's. And that he was, said it's not the worst stereotype, but it, <laughs> it's not the worst. But it's, yeah, it's, and then also still, as, yeah. as a woman, it was it was really hard. I actually had to quit that job because they were it was just sexual harassment on the boat every day, and I couldn't really? handle it anymore. It by was just everybody, by the just, sailors and the captains oh, and some sucks. of the coworkers, the dive masters, and it was just I was I was over it. I was done. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. So yeah, that I, kind of sucked. I work in a uh, in a industry that's pretty famous for. Very sexual harassy, so I I yeah. feel you. Uh, and of course, I'm not really the I, I talk and just say whatever I want, so I'm usually pretty bad myself. When at the end of it, I'm always like, "No, I'm only trying to make you laugh. I'm not trying to objectify." Damn it! No, but, oh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> damn it! I was just making a joke. But yeah, that's the worst kind of the my my excuse is always I was trying to be funny, didn't mean to make you feel like a lesser person. But <laughs> but anyways, uh, hi Luna. Yeah, so I quit my job, and I was just so, I was just fuming mad that day. They really pissed me off, and so I went to the office and I quit, and I didn't, I was so upset that I wasn't thinking clearly. So you didn't and have another job backed up? I didn't right have away. another job backed up, and it was about to be low season. 
Okay. Which low season is when, you know, people so aren't taking vacations at the end of the summer. School starting. Yeah. Also, it's hurricane season. Nobody wants to take a vacation in the Caribbean mm-hmm. when it's hurricane season. So you were supposed to be saving up for the winter and you didn't. And then and I you quit. Lost yeah, your job I quit my job. <laughs> so I was like, oh Great. shit, what am I going to do? So then I'm running around like a crazy person looking for a job. And then also in immigration, when you have, um, what I had was temporary residency with permission to work. And when you change your job, you have 90 days or quit your job oh, or whatever. No. You have 90 days to, so to report it. So on top of it being a crap situation, it's a crap situation with a time limit. Yeah, exactly. So oh, I was like, sucks. shit, what am I going to do? So I'm running around like crazy. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't find a job. Now these dive shops want to hire me. And also you have to have, you have to find a dive shop that's large enough to hire a foreigner. You have to have so many national mm-hmm. Mexican workers to every foreigner. So most of the dive shops that I was approaching already had their couple foreigners that they were allowed to have. So it was like, whoa, we'd love to have you, but we literally can't hire you oh, legally. So it was like, shit, shit, shit. Kept just roadblock after roadblock. I was losing hope. And one of my friends mentioned, well, you know, they used to have this lady that was working at the Humane Society. And now she still recording. Yeah, no, no. I'm checking time. <laughs> Sorry. We're and good. Now- we're literally exactly halfway. <laughs> Perfect. So we're good. So I'm like. Talking with my friend, and oh, well, they used to have this lady that was working at the Humane Society, and now she's working at a hospital. Mm-hmm. And I think the Humane Society doesn't have anybody to help them speak English, and you should go ask them. So I'm like, oh. Well, it's not a job in your field, yeah, but it's still a it's job. Not, and I was volunteering with the Humane Society and had fostered okay. for them as well. So it's I was, I was sort of associated with them as a volunteer. Yeah. So I knew the lady who I needed to go talk to. I sent her a message, and I said, hey... I heard that so-and-so isn't working for you guys anymore and that you might need somebody to speak English. Can I come meet with you? And she's yeah, yeah, come meet with you. And so we yeah, talked a little bit and I told her my situation and how, okay, I prefer to be diving and, you know, but I need my papers and I'm in a tight spot and do you guys need somebody? Could you help me? Yeah. And it was, yeah. Yeah, when do you, so tomorrow you can go at nine and I, I was like, oh, oh, oh really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, awesome. and we'll get the... We'll get the lady over there to do the paperwork, and we'll get your immigration set up, and that's it. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I worked at the Humane Society for about a year, and that was the hardest damn job I've ever had really? in my life. Yes. Really? It was Just super taxing all around? It was hard emotionally. Yeah. Oh. Hard physically. It was, and it was, like, really sad, man. I yeah. mean, dude, you can't well, even. Well, that's, like, <sighs> the nicest person I know can't make it as a social worker for or anything like that for long because, yeah, it's so mentally taxing. And, yeah, it's super, super hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my wife works in a, uh, and I can't, she can't legally tell me a lot of details of her work, but, yeah, she works at Center, which is, like, a halfway house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she. I can't even imagine. She wins every time I complain about work. And I can't, like, I can't, like, really tell her story, so what I'm about to do is totally fabricate something, oh. by the way, listeners. But if I'm like, oh, today at work, this guy who I work with is a jerk, she's like, yeah, well, we had somebody who, like, stabbed somebody else, and then the other person said the word gun, and then because they said the word gun, we had to, like, completely shut everything down for 12 hours and no one was allowed to leave, and I was like... Yeah, but this guy was really a jerk, though. Yeah, but he was really mean. <laughs> yeah, but like, it was a bad was day. An <laughs> so, so her bad days just destroy yeah. my bad days, and that sucks because I want to complain. Yeah, <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I want to complain about my day. Uh, anyways, uh, so, um, so humane society. So you did that for a year. When did you get back into? So I so. one of the. Board of direct of the board of the directors of the Humane Society, the accountant's husband, mm-hmm. um, was him and his brother and another gentleman own a dive shop called Scooby Doo in the Hotel Presidente, which is one of Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, like Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just gonna say, yeah, like, yeah, did, did, did they know what they're doing? I, I think they knew what they were doing. Okay, it's actually one of the oldest dive shops in Cozumel, and um, really good reputation. And I saw them at one of the benefits that we had for for the humane society that i put on yappy hour yep, oh, like, yappy hour yeah, okay. <laughs> but it was scrappy dude so it shouldn't be yappy. no no yeah, yeah no yappy hour for the humane society oh okay yappy. i was gonna say there's there's scuba <laughs> do it should be scrappy hour yeah but, okay. so so we did this event and uh the owner of the dive shop was there and and he knew i was a diver and he said hey you know we need a diver we need an instructor and a dive master over at scuba do like why don't what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm doing this humane society thing. And 
well, let me see if I can work part-time as a diver and part-time as a humane society, you know? Mm -hmm. So I did that for about two months, and I was just getting my ass kicked. Oh. That was, so that was really like, horrible. I was diving in the mornings, and then, oh. and then after diving, getting changed, going and getting something to eat, and going to the humane society for oh. the afternoon, and it was yeah. super hard. And, I mean, diving is my first love, and the humane society job was so hard that was not, not that's not something that i emotionally could have kept up with for, mm. for long term that stinks yeah could you, so, could you very broadly explain like what you did at the okay like, so the yeah. humane society of cozumel runs a free spay and neuter program every day of the year for the locals okay so it's a small island it's 16 miles by yeah so by you don't like want 32 any type miles. of animal that get overpopulated at all so but it's super overpopulated it's okay. ridiculous so it's already you overpopulated can't, you can't even imagine how overpopulated this tiny little island is so <sighs> they work tirelessly to to keep the populations yeah, under control yeah. when they started they had like a yeah. reduced rate yeah. sterilization mm -hmm. program and nobody was coming and so then they figured out that the reason people weren't coming is because they just couldn't afford it oh. the, now in the last year they've upped the Mexican minimum wage to 80 pesos a day. That's so, not per hour. Okay. 80 pesos a day. That's like you get, $6. All right. I was going to say, I don't know what a peso is. So you're going to have to help. Yeah. yeah all right. No, that's so like, like $6, $6 an hour. A, no, a day. A day. A day. Ah, oh, jeez. So can you imagine these poor, poor people? They can't, they can barely afford to feed themselves. They're not going to mm. go take their animals in to get spayed and neutered. So they made it free. Okay. Well, then the other thing is transportation. And, no, and then also... I don't want to step on anybody's toes here. So I don't have anything against the Catholics. But a lot of them are Catholics. And they don't believe in birth control. And oh, that, and that includes goes to their animals. Their animals. Oh, so my God. God is blessing them with all these litters of puppies that die from from distemper and parvovirus. Yeah. So, just you know, this, this dog, she's four years old. She's had... Three litters, and every single puppy has died, but God is blessing them with those Yeah, puppies. blessing them with animals that can't live. That's, yeah, oh, so man. that's another thing. It's it, it's just hard, and it's lack yeah. of education. That's the biggest thing. So mm -hmm. the Human Society goes into schools. They have school groups come and visit. Um, they also have an adoption program. We send uh, a lot of dogs to Canada, actually. Up in Canada, the dogs that they have to adopt are these giant shepherd mixes, yeah. wolf mixes, Huskies, things like that. So people who live in the city and want to adopt a small animal, there's just none to adopt. Yeah. So there's actually a lot of rescue groups that bring in animals from outside of the country, from Thailand, from Egypt, from yeah. Mexico, from Honduras, all these crazy places. And it's actually like a big thing. So I would huh. help send these little tiny animals we would find, send them to Canada. So I was uh. coordinating transportations, coordinating the health of these animals, testing them, making sure they don't have distemper, parvovirus, anaplasma. And that's what you did every day. Yeah, Ehrlichia, all these things Holy on crap. top of the spay and neuter. And every day they spay and neuter about 15 animals. Wow. And there's still a problem. Yeah, no, I can see why that would be very taxing. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then, and then you have animals coming in that have been abused or animals that have yeah, been living Yeah, and then the you street. got sad stories on top of that. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Yeah, super, super taxing and just hard. So I got the chance to, to start working and at the dive shop. And then you were doing both things at the both. same time. So oh, then you're physically wow. exhausted from scuba diving. So you're working, what, 60-hour weeks? So yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that was really, really hard. And I only lasted like two months. And then I, I, I told them at the Humane Society, you know, I just... I'm not giving my all to the animals and they yeah. deserve somebody who, and it's actually the woman who replaced me, Lori, she's doing an amazing job. Super, okay. super amazing. And she's, she was actually local, um, Cosmolanian. She was born there. She was raised there. Mm -hmm. And so she has a better idea of what she can do. Also politically. I'm an American. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't legally get involved in the politics of no. it as well. And it's, yeah. And also it'd be it, weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I didn't speak super great Spanish. I mean, yeah. my Spanish is better now than it was then, but, it was also kind of like when I would try to talk to people, and it still happens because I'm a volunteer there. So sometimes I'll see an unneutered un dog that somebody's walking and, hey, did you know that at the Humane Society you can get that dog neutered for free? And, oh, really? And I'll give the number out and I'll explain it. Yeah. If you don't have transportation, I can come pick it up. I can bring them back to your house. I'll help you out. You know, So I do things like that still. That's good. But some people think that they just they feel like I'm judging them. you know, And I'm really not. I just want to help. Mm -hmm. And I want to help those animals. And I want to help. Well, then all, unwanted yeah. litters from being born. And also, then the mannerisms of, of how you might have an accent so they can't really tell of your tone. 
yeah. either. I yeah. mean, so that's it's, like, it's sensitive. Yeah, it's a yeah. sensitive subject, and it, it might not come off as yeah. So helping Lori, because they can so read Lori, who yeah. took over after me, she's just doing super, super amazing job. Okay, yeah. So it's really it, it worked out for the best. So, uh, so you just brought up. Uh, I can't believe I haven't asked this question yet. So, give me the scale of. Uh, so it's Co- Cozumel is what it's called. So, how big is this island? Like, like, is it like a big and you get the areas really like a decent sized town or is it like tiny? Okay, the island itself, I believe, is 16 miles by 32. No, okay. No, 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 not 16. It's 16 miles off of the mainland. Oh, Sorry, okay, I okay. Confused. I was like, that's actually it's pretty big. <laughs> no, no, it's 8 miles by 32 miles. Okay. So it's large. So it's, it's a long island. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I believe it's Mexico's largest populated island. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and then what's the population on it? Of, like, I the wanna, city you live in? I want to say... say Around a hundred thousand. Okay, so not bad. But we not are the large. Well, we're the third largest cruise ship port in the world. Okay. So we have room for up to ten cruise ships. Every wow. Day. Ne- that like hardly ever happens. It's only okay. happened like once or twice since I've been there. There's normally. Well, Sundays there's usually none. Sundays kind of like a day off. Occasionally there'll be like a, a random one. But I mean, there's usually five or six cruise mm-hmm. ships. Wow. So yeah, so it's pretty. Like, and I, each cruise ship has thousands of people. It gets yeah, nuts when there's yeah. a bunch of cruise ships in town. When a cruise I'm like, ship stops and just everybody oh, no, empties you. out, yeah, you're crazy. like, holy. Yeah, it's and super then you, crazy. I just picture, you know, a bunch of like middle aged white people in Hawaiian shirts, is what I'm picturing. And balloon hats. But, <laughs> all right, cool. Balloon you weren't hats. correcting, you were adding. No, oh, yeah, up, yeah. Up, like with hats and like actually balloons? Yeah, like the ones that clowns make. What? So they go to Senior <laughs> Frogs, which is like. It's like the party place, right? Carlos and Charlie, Senior Frogs, Margaritaville. Yeah. They just okay. opened uh what did they just open in one of the piers that was really funny to me? God, what was it? Some big chain store. Just Margaritaville. Oh, Bubba Gumps. So. Bubba we Gumps. Just got a Bubba Gumps. I, I've we been have to a Bubba Gumps before. Yeah, so Bubba Gump they, they had one in uh in uh Mall of America. So yeah, they're uh-huh. apparently were very And they've got them yeah, they got them in the airport. Yeah. In airports and stuff too. Yeah. So 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 Margaritaville was already horrible enough before the bubble gums came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh let's go waste away in Margaritaville. Okay, uh I had to get that joke out. So so yeah, so that's so Hawaiian t shirts, middle aged fat white people and people crossing the street without looking. Oh I've almost killed tourists like multiple times because they just I don't understand like it's okay, I'm things, sure you can get away with it. Like, it's only that, a tourist. Things that they would never do in their, like, yeah, they in their care. hometown. Yeah, well, yeah. It's just like, lose all inhibitions. They're drinking. They're like, woo, I'm in Mexico. Yeah. And they're just nuts. Ugh. Really crazy. Spring break is absolutely insane. Oh, God. When I was working at... So there's so about <laughs> half, of, half of that month is just oh, yeah, crap. Dude. And then also, the same around the same time as spring break is... So, at the same time of Mardi Gras down in Mexico, they don't do Mardi Gras, they do Carnival. Yep, Carnival, So, yeah. it's the same kind of thing. There's a big parade, and there's dancing and drinking, so just and it's crazy. crazy. So, it's the time super, I should come nuts. and be a stupid yeah, tourist there. Yeah, yeah right. you, I think you would have a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, well, convince, well, convince yeah. Leslie, and then we're on our way. To be honest yeah. with you. Uh, the closest thing we ever did to that, there, there's a... Flogging Molly, one of my favorite bands, does a tour each year uh-huh. where they get a cruise ship and you can be... I heard about that. Yeah, they, they do. There's multiple they, different they do, kinds of, like, yeah. cruises. There's, like, a rock cruise. Yeah. You know, so stuff Flo- like that. Flogging Molly does. It's called the Salty Dog Cruise. Uh, they do it every year, and I don't know who they're going to have this year. But there was a year where it was them and Golga Bardello, another one of my favorite bands. And a friend of mine went... And also, so me and Leslie were going to go do that, and it was just, like, the thousands of dollars, and I wasn't making as much as I am now, and it was just hard to be like, we're going to be gone an entire week. But it's, the cruise ship goes to different islands in the Bahamas and plays a band, or plays, plays a, a show, show in yeah. every single one. Uh-huh. So just, like, holy crap, it's got to be one of the best experiences. And then when my friend went, who I actually had on the podcast, Barrett, when Barrett Ryder went, I, he was like, hey, should I tell you about the cruise? And I was like, no. No. You shouldn't. You shouldn't tell me anything about it. Don't I hope it, I hope it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it actually, works. I'm not sure if it was that cruise. I don't know what cruise it was. It was like a, a rock band or something. It was a rock, yeah. a rock cruise, right? And it was funny because I was driving downtown and there's like all these people with tattoos and like these cool looking people. And yeah. I'm like, this is not the normal crowd. What is going on here? <laughs> so I went home and Googled it because you can just like 
Google Cozumel port and see what yeah. ships are in it. And then I saw it was like a rock cruise ship, and I was like, oh, that's why there were so many cool people. That's pretty cool. They didn't look like douchebags. Awesome. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think that cruise goes through. I guess I don't know how close you guys are to the Bahamas because I know nothing close. about that. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I mean, like that whole Caribbean sea thing. Okay. I mean, a lot of a lot of the cruise ships, Cozumel is either the first stop or the last stop. Okay. They do a circle. Because it's kind like of kind of one of the pumps. bigger ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like a super tiny island comparison. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I'm just shotgunning these beers during this, so I'm keep losing track of where I I've got a, I'm the worst interviewer right now. Yeah, so say whatever cruise, you want. Themed cruise ships. So there's all kinds of themed cruise ships, right? Like we were just talking about the rock bands and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, there's also swinger cruises. Oh, nice. I didn't know about this. And it's a thing? It's a thing. So I had so no, you, so you I had no idea. you get approached by... Couples oh my god, often? so here goes, no, not often, it only happened, well, I'm sure there's been more than one swinger cruise, but it happened when I was working for the company doing videos. Mm-hmm. So, normal day of my life, when I was doing videos, you, I'm there before they get to the dive shop, they're getting to the dive shop, the groups, and um, I make, like, little shots of them in the dive shop getting their equipment, mm-hmm. them getting on the boat, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that day the boat was a little bit late, so I took the opportunity while we were on the pier waiting for the boat to introduce myself to everybody, like yeah. I always do. Hey, I'm Joey. I'm a videographer. I'm going to be going with. And is everybody part of the cruise ship, the entire tour? Yeah. So yeah. basically, usually we we had like four boats, right? There was a big boat that can have up to 28 people. Okay. There's smaller boats that can have like eight to 12 people. And that day, I think we had like 22 people so kind of a from one cruise yeah. ship. Yeah. Yeah. And so each ship would be on different boats. So literally everybody was part of that cruise exactly. ship. Exactly. So, so they were all like, we're banging everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody in this group is from the swinger ship. And me and my coworkers, we had no idea. Oh, because, I no. Mean, they don't announce it. To yeah, us. they don't be like. Oh, by it's the way, just like this is the yeah, yeah, exactly. Because every cruise comes like you know every week, every two weeks. There's mm-hmm. kind of like a like Thursdays would be the Carnival Freedom and these ones, are, right? So yeah, we had yeah. no idea that that week was the Swingers Cruise. And so I'm introducing <laughs> myself to everybody, and everything's going normal. And I get to one guy, and I do an intro shot. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a little shot of you guys. Um, there's no audio. I do music in the background, so just mm-hmm. wave wave to the camera or yeah. do whatever you want. And this dude motorboats his wife's boobs. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Dude's, <laughs> dude's freaky. All right, they're on vacation. Maybe it's their honeymoon. I have no idea. I'm not judging. So, I, you know, I'm like, okay. Are you sure it's his wife still? Yeah. It's well, who knows? It could have been boobs. his wife. I have no idea. He motorboats a wife's yeah, boobs. Yeah, so he motorboats <laughs> some lady's boobs. And then I get to this older couple, and it was the oldest couple in the group. Um, I would say they were in their 60s. Um, nice. And so I, I introduced myself to the to the to the woman first because she was closer to me, and then I go to shake the man's hand. And as I'm shaking his hand, and I'm like, "Hi, I'm Joey." He goes, "Oh, you're just so beautiful. I forgot my name." And it's like right in front of his wife, you know. So I'm feeling awkward. So you're like, okay. yeah. I'm like, oh well, Karen here is really pretty too. Ha ha. You know, it's like weird. Yeah, yeah. And she's just smiling at me like sweet little old lady, right? And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, oh, we're banging everybody. Yeah. Don't so, worry this, about so this is weird for me, right? And I'm like, okay, well that was weird. We get on the boat. Everything's going normal. We're we're on our way to the reef, and I I like you know take little shots of people setting up their equipment, mm-hmm. getting ready. So you still don't know yet. Yeah. So we have no idea. None of us know. We have no idea. And then I see the the guy who told me I was so beautiful. He didn't remember his name. He's getting ready, and most of the time people will like wear like wetsuits or like these mm-hmm. thin neoprene things or whatever, right? So it's normal for people to like get their swimsuit, have their swimsuits on, so they take their clothes off, and then they put yeah. on their thing. This dude gets naked. Oh. And, you know, boats are rocking. And that's not an in way that's, normal. That's not normal. Nobody yeah, gets yeah, naked. Yeah. There's a bathroom to change. Yeah, like, yeah, that's not normal. Yeah. You go to the bathroom and put your swimsuit on. But they've on. been used to doing yeah, crap exactly, like right? this whole so, so he's like, so I'm like naked. okay, and, you know, the boat's, it's a big boat, and it's got a nice, like, um pathway in between the seats right but there's like a, a, sh- a shade and mm-hmm. there's bars and so he grabs onto his bar and he's like got his feet like a foot apart a so foot and a half apart guy. yeah and he's swaying back and forth and i saw things that i wish i would have never seen <laughs> okay and i'm like holy shit and i look oh, at my co-workers man. and they're like dang and they're they're laughing in spanish and they're like ah oh, el huevito tiene oh tiene huevos and like he has eggs, which is like balls. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's got balls to stand there naked in front of everybody. And yeah. they're like, they're making jokes. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I would have seen that. <laughs> Whatever. So the day just keeps getting weirder. And we still don't know. 
And then I'm just making small small talk with some people. I'm and no one's money. reacting the way you think they'd yeah, react. So it's even weird. weird. Like, no how come no one's like, why is this dude naked? Yeah. Everyone's like, yeah. yeah. What a weird day. Whip it out. Yeah, so then I'm talking <laughs> with these um, these two, two guys and two women that were, their equipment was next to where I was going to be setting up my equipment. So we're just chatting. And, and um, the guys actually kind of like, look similar the wives happen to look similar which is like i don't know they all have the same body type so mm -hmm. they look like, like a mom and a dad kind of and so i'm talking with them and i said they're like oh so how do you like this job and i said oh well at first it was kind of hard to sell myself you know because you have to sell yourself mm -hmm. nobody's gonna buy the dvd from you if you don't look confident and you don't yeah. like yeah. tell them that it's amazing so I was telling them, you know, sometimes I get a little shy and it's, it was hard at first. And they go, oh, well, you're with the wrong group to be shy. And they laughed. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean? And it's, you don't know. And, and I said, now you found out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, what? Well, this is a swingers cruise. We're all from the swingers cruise. And I was like, oh, click. Click, click, click. it all clicked. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, holy shit, huh? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's why that guy's naked. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so out of these 22 people, there was one couple that they were like, I don't know, bodybuilders or something. They yeah. were super gorgeous. Yeah. And everybody else was like, I don't know, plain yeah. Jane. Like, I've, I've pictured people, people Swedish that I would have never yeah, like pretty imagined. Normal. So later, I'm trying to avoid the creepy old guy that told me I was so beautiful because he's just being weird. And I'm like, I just can't. And even. his dick was out half the time. And his dick was out, right? <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. I saw your dick. That's weird. Yeah. Well, anyways, later on, I ended up talking with him and he was telling me. I'm going to drink one of the drinks I bought. Yeah, go way, ahead. I don't want to. Psych I don't want to interrupt this. Yeah. And kill the game. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I'm talking with the old guy and he's like telling me, well, oh, you wouldn't imagine on, on the ship during the swingers cruise. It's clothing optional. And then at each stop, they tell you which beaches are nudist beaches. For yeah, which ones, yeah. hey, you guys should yeah. have clothes on, hey, you guys should. Exactly. Yeah. So they let yeah. them know, and, you know, and they have different themes every night. And it's like, he was kind of telling me about it, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And and he was telling me, you know, you would be really surprised. All these beautiful, beautiful women, but they're so egotistical. He was telling me how they're, like, prancing around with their oh, big perky like we know boobs. what we, we have. Know we're yeah. sexy. Yeah. And, and then he told me something about you. Well, you're just so naturally beautiful, and you, women like you are really the lucky ones. And I'm like, thank you, I appreciate that, but at the same time, I'm totally freaked out. Like, I'm just grossed out. <laughs> you should have ruined it. Like, no, actually, my nose and my boobs are fake. <laughs> yeah, just, no, oh, shit. I just shit. whacked him off. <laughs> shit. Like, yeah. actually, I was born a man. Back off. <laughs> yeah. So that was, <laughs> oh, a, that was a super weird, weird day. At the end of the day, he told me. Well, I wish we could take you back on the boat and not just the DVD. Oh, Are there God. any shots of you in it? And I was Ugh. like, no, I'm behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Uh, Go back on the boat. <laughs> should've, you should have just been like, why? How much more would you pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you sneak me in your suitcase? <laughs> God. Yeah, that was a weird day. Yeah, that sounds... Themed it, cruises. At least you get to, like, remember, like, it broke the monotony of just another... Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. So that sounds fun. So uh, that was back when you were doing the videotaping the stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to check time again because, um, cool, we're at 106. So. 106. I was actually, you know, you were like, oh, an hour and a half. I was like, am I going to be able to talk about Dude, myself trust that me. long? This goes way quicker than most people yeah, know. It's a it bad interview fun. when I'm like, oh, how am I going to make this last? But usually they... Yeah, they and you're good at asking questions and things like that. Well, so thanks. Like, oh, thanks yeah. for validating me. Plus, I'm kind of yeah. drunk because that Vikings game. I wasn't scary. planning on drinking at all today, and I was like, if she wants a drink, maybe I'll have one, da da da. And then the Vikings game was so horrible, I was like, I'm gonna stop and get myself beer. <laughs> and I sucked down like two before you got here. <laughs> so, and I haven't eaten yet. That's another thing. I haven't had lunch. Oh, well, there you go. Drink yeah. down an empty so, stomach. So, I've been, yeah, I've been, Did my lunch has been beer. Eat? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, where are we at? So, you gave me a good story inside uh, when you were a videographer, and then we uh, went through I your year or two at, at, uh, at Scuba Doo. So now of uh, Scuba Doo, are you still at Scuba Doo? I'm not at Scuba Doo. I was there until okay. until I got pregnant. I was actually on the boats um, when I realized that I might be pregnant. Oh, I never God. get seasick. I never yeah. get seasick. And normally we go out on the boats and we do two dives. So one tank is a deeper dive to about 80 feet for about okay. 45 minutes, and then we take an interval. So you have to let the, basically you have to off gas. You got to let those nitrogen bubbles get out of your blood system before you can go for another Do you? Dive. Okay. You're you saying do. it like it's normal stuff, but I'm you like, do. I've never ah. done that before. Yeah, okay. okay. So that's a normal thing. So you take an interval and some dive companies will take you back to shore. Some mm -hmm. will just do it on the boat. 
And that's what we would do. We would do it on the boat. Um, so you just hang out for about 45 minutes to an hour and then jump back in the water and do another shallower dive, usually for about an hour. And it was during the interval, interval and I was just nauseous. And I'm like, what the heck? So I thought I had, like, food poisoning or I mm-hmm. ate something bad because mm-hmm. I never get seasick. And I was like, this is weird. And um, my coworker it's like, you don't feel good. I can see it on your face. And I was like, no, man, I feel super nauseous. And she's like, you pregnant? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I didn't. And you were like, fuck you. I, yeah, exactly. I was like, no, fuck you. And then I really started thinking about it, and I was like, oh. Oh, Well, geez. I guess. Oh, What's that thing I haven't been uh, putting on? Yeah. That thing? Oh, no. No, I'm not <laughs> using those things. That's the thing. That's pure? Dude, oh, I'm like one of those, what's the percentage? I don't even know what the percentage of, of pregnancy with condom use is, but I'm one of the few. That really lucky. push it? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean... So she wasn't planned or anything, and so then I found out I was pregnant, and and you can't dive when you're pregnant. Theoretically, okay. it shouldn't be a problem because the baby's in amniotic fluid, and air is the compression yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just don't know. Oh, so we're not 100%. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so why risk it? Yeah, basically why risk it? And nobody wants to be tested on when they're pregnant, right? So there's no, there's been no studies. Yeah. They have no idea. Jeez, uh, is there is there any type of insurance or anything with your job of like, oh, by the way, now you can't make money because you're doing that. So they you're did. Pregnant? So they did sucks. offer me a job as a um, like desk help. Yeah, like de- at least yeah, temporarily. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So they told me that I could be as, as like sales kind of. You okay. s- you sit at the at the desk. Actually, you don't sit. You have to stand. So the scuba do is one of the dive shops in one of the oldest. Most expensive hotels in Cozumel, El Presidente, okay. the President Hotel. Yeah, yeah, I know, so, I know what that word means. Yeah, so it's a so it's an old hotel, really expensive rooms, really fancy clientele, mm-hmm. and so one of their rules is that you're not allowed to sit. And I'm like, that's so that's weird. weird. You also can't eat. So like, pregnant women are eating all the time. Yeah, right? like yeah. you feel like you want to sit and you want to take pregnant. a snack, yeah. right? And it's outside, uh, so in a palapa on the beach, and I'm like. <laughs> You know, right away, I did it for about a month. And, and you're like, I'd rather be diving. <laughs> and I was like, this sucks. Yeah. I'm not even, like, I'm not even super pregnant yet. The bathroom was really far away. I'm like, as I get more pregnant, this is going to be so horrible. So I quit. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So then you just... You yeah, know. and also the pay was really bad. Like, oh, okay. working as a, as a dive master, as an instructor, you get, you get commission. So okay. however many dives you have, you get... How but that's you, how do you is it up to you how many guys you get, get though? Like, no, that's what so you're commissioned, but it's off of somebody else's sales. Like, that's like no, somebody else is it, getting it, you. It, no, it depends on how many how many divers there are. Okay, all right, that makes you sense. I was gonna say, like, are you the like one who's call. getting it at no, least? No, yeah, yeah, it was a roll call. Okay. So we had like six, seven dive masters, and okay, we have enough for four today, so then the two who didn't work work first tomorrow. So it was like a roll. Okay, that makes sense when you're diving. So, anyways, um. Yeah, so I quit because I couldn't do it. Yeah. It was, and it was really shitty pay in comparison because you were just making – you would be making commissions on sales, but it was really low, and it was just base pay. And I was telling you how it was like 80 pesos an hour is minimum wage, but they were going to pay 100 – not an hour a day. They were going to pay like 100 pesos a day. So just slightly over minimum wage, which is Yeah, nothing. it was like, yeah. It was like $8 a day. No, less than Jeez. that. There was yeah. no way I was going to be torturing myself all pregnant for that yeah. minimum amount of money. Not worth it. So I quit. And then I actually I got a job working for a company called Shore Excursions that they sell shore excursions to cruise ship people. Mm-hmm. And it was really weird because I was just writing these, I was writing like explanations of what the shore excursion was, but I had never actually done any of these shore excursions, nor been to the places where I was writing them for, like Portugal. So it was kind of like, like France. Yeah, living. Yeah, like, yeah, so it was super weird. It's probably nice I was, down there. I, I basically like Wikipedia information about these places and then just like wrote up bullshit. You know, like they give you information like the tour is this long and you go to these places, but I would have to like, you know, Oh, go and enjoy a bike ride through the beautiful mountains of France in this city and go eat this food that is, you know, so it was really weird. But yeah. I did that and that was cool because I just like sat at home and mm-hmm. pregnant and tapping, tapping I, uh, on the computer. I, I want to get, I got a couple questions before and we're pretty close to yeah, caught up with your life, them. right? Yeah. Um, which there's about three questions I want to ask after that. So you met your husband right a bit ago. So we, we skipped over your husband. My husband. So, yeah. So, he's Mexican, right? He is I'm assuming. Mexican, yeah. Yes. He, so. The way we met was super, super funny. So, 
I mentioned that yes, I had... Yes, another story. Yeah. All right. So I mentioned that I had a, a boyfriend when I was doing this visa mm -hmm. to... And so this was in like 2014. So Antonio, um, I don't know. We were okay, but he liked to party a lot. I was trying to get out of that stage in my life. Yeah. So we didn't work out. We broke up. No harm, no foul. Yeah, no, it, it's he a left, logical one. Yeah, so yeah. he left some stuff at my house, some diving stuff. And I'd asked him, hey, do you want was this? Was he a stuff? diver too? Yeah, he was a diver as well. Okay. Um, He was a dive master. And so he left us some some diving things like fins and a couple masks and some wetsuits at my house when we broke up. And so I asked him, hey, you want this stuff? No, I don't want it. Do whatever you want with it. Sell it. I don't care. Okay. So <laughs> okay. I actually ended up just like tossing it in my closet because my mom came to visit and then I forgot about it. And so then like months later, I was cleaning and I found this bag of dive stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm going to organize this. And it's so, not going to fit you because yeah, exactly. it's for him. It's yeah. for men's stuff, right? Yeah. So I pull it out and there's like some masks and some fins and some some wetsuits. And this is like right when Facebook now has that marketplace where you can take pictures mm -hmm. and sell stuff yeah. on Facebook. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just try this for the first time. So I took pictures of this dive gear, put it on Facebook marketplace. And this guy messages me uh, about, yeah, some dude, <laughs> some dude messages me about a wetsuit. Okay. And so that's actually how I met my husband, <laughs> selling my ex-boyfriend's wetsuit. Nice. I mean, <laughs> it, it's kind of symbiotic, too. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like, weird. I'm getting rid of the rest of my ex. Come on in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so he's um he's actually in the Mexican Air Force. Okay. And so he works a lot. So when I was trying to organize meeting with him to to show him this wetsuit that he was mm -hmm. interested in buying, he was working so much that he wasn't able to to come out to my house to look for it. And so yeah. he finally asked me after like a couple of days of failed meetings, like, can you just bring it to my work? And I'm like, yeah, I have a scooter. I can do that. Not. No big yeah. deal. Island's tiny. I can definitely. I take it there's a lot of scootering in a. Oh in, my God. Like, it's nuts. I was going to say. Everybody uh, has scooters and it's dangerous. What, what, about, uh, what about golf courses or golf carts? Is that no, a thing there? not a thing. Because I know and in Bahamas, Isla, a lot of those. Yeah. Is Isla not about Holbox golf is an island in Mexico that's okay. smaller that has golf carts. Mm -hmm. But no, we're all about the scooters and so if you see a full tri size like truck is it weird <laughs> no there's lots of cars and stuff too. okay yeah cool. there's lots of lots of, lots of trucks as well. all right um but everybody's scooters just because why not <laughs> yeah so i went to so i went to the air force base to sell this wetsuit and first i went to the wrong gate and then i was all nervous because there's like guys with guns and they're all in uniform not like i hadn't seen guns growing up here yeah. but yeah. these are like semi-automatic like big guns you yeah know? They're, they're like not messing uniform. around yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> and so i'm trying to explain to these guys in my semi-fluent spanish that i'm gonna go meet this guy to, to sell, sell him wet a wetsuit and they're just looking at me like i'm absolutely insane <laughs> like yeah where's the bomb you terrorist yeah exactly. like, so, no, so they didn't want to let me in they didn't want to let me in so i ended up calling him on my phone and like just handing my phone to the gate guy and then like i was like oh yeah i'm I'm this person and let her come in and she's going to come to my office. And so I, okay. I drove up and I'm nervous. I'm like, Oh my God, this is so like creepy and weird. And I'm on a base and <laughs> I'm an American and this is crazy. And so I pull up and in his Facebook, he had an older picture from when he used to lift weights and he was like super tan and where he looked like a Guido in this picture. Okay. And I was just like, so I'm not expecting anything. I didn't find yeah. him attractive in his Facebook picture to be yeah. honest at all. I'm like, I don't like guys like that. That's weird. I love that you said Guido because that means Italian. So yeah. thanks for saying that Italian. You attractive. don't look like a Guido. <laughs> All right, thanks. You don't like <laughs> good save, good save. You're like, I thought he was Italian, which is gross. And I'm like, yeah, right. No, I meant like, like all jacked and tan, mm. like you know, like that's you meant Jersey Shore. Yeah, 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 no, Jersey Shore. I, I, exactly I know what you what meant. What I just, uh, I'm an American, so I have to uh, uh, find every chance I can to be offended. I don't know if <laughs> yeah. you know that about yes. us, but that's yeah, what we I know do that. Now. Yeah, uh, so I pull up, and this guy comes out in his uniform, and he was super handsome and really nice and nice. very kind and like funny and. And I showed him the wetsuit, and he actually bought, like, some fins and other things that I had. And because he had just started diving. And he was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, I'm getting into diving. And so we chatted a little bit. And he told me, oh, yeah, I'm just starting to learn English. So he was practicing his English. Okay. And, so you, and that was it. You, you were, yeah, I'm taking your better surprised. at your Spanish at this point. Yeah. So so you were like, yeah, well, this is my second language. And he's like, cool, your first language is my second language. What's yeah, up? exactly. So, so. so it was kind of fun. And then I left the base and he, you know, took the stuff and a few days later he messaged me and th at this time I was still working half at the Humane Society, half scuba diving. So okay. on Facebook, okay. I had on there that I was working at the Humane Society and he wrote me and he said, hey, I see you work at the Humane Society. What do you know about cats? And so he had these two cats that were So fighting. how much was he looking for a reason to talk to you? 
He that was, sounds so much like yeah, he was, but they really cats, were, I guess. <laughs> they really were fighting. One of the cats had like a big wound on his face, and so I was oh. talking with him about these cats, and they were both young males. I'm like, well, if you neuter neuter them both, they'll they'll stop being. They so, should. Yeah, they yeah. should theoretically. But both our cats natural. are neutered, and yeah, exactly. both of them don't have claws, and they still kill each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so he was like, oh, and so we started talking about that, and then he was like, oh, and at this time his sister was living with him as well. She's just a year younger than me. Um, and she was working as a secretary at a hospital. She went to college for tourism. So oh, she was living there as well. Perfect. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, me and Tanya have a have an English test on Friday. Can you come help us study? Yeah, he is so he's searching. Smooth. Well, yeah, he is yeah. smooth. Yeah, he's so He found the two things he knew about you to get hit yeah, you into get his life. There, yeah. <laughs> they meant to study in English. Huh. Yeah, and then, you know, I obviously sold him dive gear, and, and he was asking me something about about like what do I like to do on and I was like, Oh well I like to go snorkeling, you know and he's like, Oh we should go snorkeling. So that's what actually what we did first. We went snorkeling right in front of the Air Force Base, which is now where I live. Okay. Um there's these two sunken ships that oh, are really that cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, so there's these two sunken ships like just right offshore. So I was like, Have you dove those? And he's like, Yeah I dove them once but I never snorkeled them and I'm like, Well let's go snorkel them. So what would be the difference of just like looking at it from the top, top opposed yeah. to Yeah, and it's yeah. different. And yeah. you know, so it was cool and it was really funny, actually. So we went out, and I'm just swimming, and then I stopped to to look around, and he's like way behind me, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" And, like, and, and then I realized oops, I need to I'm turn it down. Yeah, I need to turn it down person. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I'm a big fat white dude, so if I like jumped into there, I'd be like, "Run, run, give me a second." <laughs> <laughs> I'm always swimming legs like yeah. back up. Yeah. So that was like the first time we hung out, and then I I went and helped them with their English, and then we got their cats neutered, no. and then he and now was, he's running out of reasons to justify being around <laughs> you. So yeah, now he has to like yeah. So then the do you want to hang out anyways? Yeah. So the, so the next thing he came up with um was The Walking Dead. He liked The Walking Dead. And so we watched a couple episodes of The Walking okay. Dead together. Perfect. And then it just happened that his vacation time was coming up, and he had a trip planned to go to Guadalajara, which is on the other side of Mexico. Okay. And his vehicle was there. He went to the Air College in Guadalajara, and then when he got stationed somewhere else, he left his truck there with a friend. And then eventually he ended up in Cozumel and decided, okay, i got to go get my truck. So mm -hmm. he was going to use his vacation to fly there and then drive back. And he asked me to go with. And I was like, oh. Well, I've never been there, so that yeah. would be cool. Why not? Yeah. Sweet. Um, but I don't think I can get the time off. You yeah. Know? So he's like, well, you know, if you want to come, you can come. I'll buy your ticket. I said, like, oh, okay. So I Sweet. so I asked my boss, and, and he's like, oh, Guadalajara, huh? Have you ever been there? And no, and that's the home of mariachi. Right? Okay. Yeah. So I think I knew that. he's like, oh, and Guadalajara is really pretty, and it's so cool, and that's a nice Also, so would that be on the Pacific Ocean? Yeah. And have you dived in the Pacific Ocean? No, I haven't dove in the Pacific Ocean. And it's okay. actually a little bit inland where we, where okay. we were. Okay, so you didn't so get the chance the ocean either. And, ah, and we were on a bit of a timeline because he only had 15 days. Yeah. So he, we had to get back. But anyways, my boss was super cool and let me go. Mm. He was like, well, you know, and let me look at what we have this coming week and how many days are you going to be gone? All 10 days. So, yeah, yeah, go. Do it. You, you, you have a good opportunity. Have fun. And I'm like, yeah. really? Like, my boss kind of had a, a reputation of being an asshole, so I was like, "So, so yes. that wasn't quite an asshole." Sweet, yet. yeah. I'm surprised. like, sweet. Thank you so much. And so then I went on that little vacation with him, and that's kind of when we we fell in love. Nice. We fell in love, and then the next month we made Luna. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I knew it was quick. So, it was so quick. <laughs> can, can I can I tell you my perception of everything? Yeah, from, from Facebook. From being somebody on Facebook yeah. in America. Because, oh, well, here's my thing, uh, uh, listeners. We I only had, got nine minutes okay, left. Okay, so I had been vacationing in North Dakota, like, uh, four months before That's then. That's what I was going to say. And yeah. I had been decided that me and our friend, our mutual friend, David, yeah. we were trying to do a long-term relationship. Yep, I remember like that. A, a long-distance relationship. Yeah. And it didn't really work out. And next thing I knew. And then all of a sudden, next thing Facebook kid. knew, <laughs> I'm like married and have a kid. So yeah. it was a little scandalous on my it, part. Yeah, so that was, I'm glad you said exactly my perception. Is That's I was what like, it was. I, I remember you in town. And then I remember you out of town, and then I remember uh, a, a mutual Facebook friend was like, ah, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, really? You guys are trying to make it work when she's in Mexico? And next yeah. thing I know, it didn't work. And then, hey, I'm married and I have a kid coming. I was like, whoa! whoa. <laughs> it was scandalous. I was like, I won't deny that. Way to rebound. <laughs> That's yes. a pro well, rebound. Well, now David's having twins. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've heard. So. Yeah, it's great. Look at us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. 
Apparently, uh, apparently that was an aphrodisiac with breaking up with each other. It was <laughs> like, hey, you want to get your life figured out? Yeah. Break up, boom. All right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, he. Uh, I'm gonna change. Uh, we only got like yeah a couple minutes, and there was still like three things I was gonna ask. So it looks like it's gonna go quick. So, um, where are we at? So you diving now? You're still diving. Um, so you can't dive when you're pregnant, and then also my yep. daughter had a tongue and a lip tie. Oh, okay. Which made her not want to drink out of a bottle. Okay. So I've been nursing, and that means that I haven't been able to really leave her. Yeah. So the last couple of months, I've dove a, a few times just freelancing. Yeah. Um, taking out people we know. We went diving by the boat a couple of times, and my husband stayed on, on the surface with the baby Aww. while I worked. It was and really cool. And he was nursing. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was nursing. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get anything, but yeah. it'll make you feel better here. Yeah, so um, actually when I go back, I have a meeting with a owner of a dive shop that needs somebody to do reservations on the computer and then also okay. calling people. So I'll be able to work out of the house. And then busy season is coming up, so I can freelance with them. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I was, I was asking yeah, if you've actually got back to working with a company yet, but you haven't No, the company yet. that I was working with, I ran into the owner when Luna was about four months old, and he was like, oh, I need you back. When are you going to be back to diving? And... I would really love to work there because it's a great company, but okay. not as a mother. Yeah. Because you just make commissions. Or at so, least at where you're at yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Right or, now, it's yeah. not. If she was in school age, yeah, I could do it. Or, but, or just not needing to be, like, nursing all the time. Yeah, yeah. But, but even that, even if she was just, like, you know, taking a bottle and stuff, being an instructor, you have to be at the hotel every day. But mm -hmm. you only make money if you make sales. Yeah. So I could theoretically be sitting at a hotel all day, not Doing with my no, child. Yeah, making no money. Making no money. Yeah, so that's that, horrible. Yeah, exactly. So freelancing for me, I think, is what, what it, my future is going to be. Okay. Uh, next question, and this is more of a just hilarious, I just thought about this, was so you got out of the country and went to Mexico mm -hmm. in 2012. I don't know if you heard about 2016. The end of the year? Thing? Is that what you're going for? Okay. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm bringing up our president. Uh, oh, oh, so, oh. I don't know if you heard what happened in 2016, but we got a guy who just totally hates Mexico in the White House now. Yes, I know. And I love that at the same time we're like, these horrible murderer rapists are coming in, and you're like, yeah, I'm going down there. I'm going down there. So you <laughs> I gotta go join them! Well, <laughs> has, I, has that been weird of uh, watching our country in... I'm neither right nor left. I'm pretty center, and I still really dislike our president. So I'm going to say, watching our country plunge into what it currently is in, but you're doing it from the sidelines as an American. How was that? It's interesting. I mean, obviously, a lot of the people down in Mexico don't particularly like him. No shit. What? My husband's actually one of the rare people that sees him as a businessman, and, yeah. and he doesn't really mind him. There's plenty you know, of those there's people plenty up of here. Those people. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I know a lot of them. So I mean, not everybody hates him like everybody would assume. Mm -hmm. Some people think that he's doing okay. I I just try not to get into it, especially living down there. I just don't need to put so myself you, you, into those you stay places. Pretty much out of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm staying out of it. I don't. Uh, I don't want to get into it. Yeah. But it is. There's you know sometimes comedic things like carnival this year. Yeah. Some people, some mutual friends of mine, made a float making fun of Trump <laughs> and uh, that was kind of that like ended up on the news in Europe or something what? yeah, it was, That's yeah funny. I'll have to show you something yeah. but I there's you know they make Trump pinatas and now their <laughs> shirts now their shirts showing up like in Playa del Carmen it says it says like make Playa del Carmen great again Cancun can pay for it like stuff like that you know? so there's like funny things That's good stuff. but really I mean it's interesting for me being an immigrant yeah. Because I went to another country, yeah, and I had to do it legally, yeah. and it does piss me the fuck off when I see people down there working without the proper paperwork. Because I spent my time and my mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. getting sponsored, getting the right. You mean like Americans that go down there and work? Yeah, the or Europeans? Because that's yeah, exactly a what. Lot of them. That's exactly what we are against up yeah, here. Yeah, so Mexico has like, very strict immigration laws. Yeah, and they hold them to it. I have a friend from Argentina that got deported out of Mexico for working without the yeah. proper permits. Well, so, I mean, it. I, uh, it's just such a sensitive topic. Yeah. It's okay. a super, super sensitive totally topic. Totally why I asked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a sensitive uh, topic. But also, you're also, what, uh, literally a far away from the borders you can almost... Yeah, like. I'm super, you're not, super far you away from the You can tend peninsula, yeah, the bottom of, yeah, of Mexico, um, pretty away. much. So it's not so much like if you moved right on the other side of the border, I'm sure it'd be something you deal with daily. 
Um, and then now my second thing is um, literally just cultural differences of like uh, being an American as I am and living in America of dealing with things that happen constantly that we can't get away. I, I call it like the, the media bubble or the cultural bubble of like football games I constantly watch or just like Super Bowl you can't escape and then things like that, things that are so all the way American, your finger's no longer near the pulse, mm -hmm. is it? So No, I have no idea what's going on culturally. Down yeah. There. Like really, I'm super far removed. Like every time I come up here, I turn on the radio, I have no idea. What's going the on? songs that are on the radio, I'm like, what? I don't know that song. And then my friend... I don't either, like, by the way. Yeah, I'm like, I'm still, like <laughs> top 40, things like that. We never really paid attention, but it's funny because like sometimes I'll go see friends and they'll be listening to music and I'm like, oh, this sounds really cool. And they're like, this came out like four years ago. Where have you been? Mexico? <laughs> yeah, so like, what do you think of it? to mariachi down there. Like, hello. Because <laughs> I know I, I, have a, I have a friend who I've like never met, but I... I have a friend over Facebook who lives in the Philippines, uh -huh. and her finger seems to be more on um, the pulse of American media than mine is. So I found that really weird oh, of other is. countries who yeah, she some, some she people follows are really into it, and yeah. some people aren't. I and I mean, she follows you know, pop music more than I do, and like she, she's like obsessed with like uh, freaking like Kristen Stewart, and I'm like, and I have no idea what's going on with our yeah, celebrities, and she did, and I was well, like, I wonder if that's a thing. There and are so, there's there's a lot of Mexicans that are very into into American culture and yeah. you know, American pop and and you're just like stay that. out of and it. I'm just I mean I never really that. was yeah. even when I lived up here so it's not a big thing but like I don't even have it we have a TV but we don't have cable we just okay. hook it up to just watch local the computer stuff. with HDMI we don't yeah. have, no we don't have any local channels oh um, wow we just use it on the computer occasionally so so do you get caught up on our TV shows that we're watching. Oh, well, that no. sucks, because there's a bunch of stuff yeah. on HBO I there's love really, right now. Yeah, there's like. really cool stuff. Like, And sometimes I'll like go over to a friend's house that has like you know cable, and there's yeah. American cable channels down there mm -hmm. in Mexico, and they just have it subtitled well, in Spanish. You, you think that like a lot of the like uh, YouTube or even other streaming services should be... Yeah. I guess I don't know how they are in different countries, but they should be pretty close. Like, if you wanted to get yeah. like, HBO now, you could yeah, and watch sure HBO. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you should, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and there's, there's actually <laughs> a lot of people that... that Kitten? Um, do you're getting lifted. Sorry. I don't know what it's called when they get a where the computer it looks like they're in the United States. Yeah. Okay. They, they do that to watch like American Netflix. Yeah, Netflix in Mexico sense. is different. It doesn't have the same options. Did you know oh, that? Oh, oh no, I did not. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, there you go. I've never lived in Mexico, yeah. that's why I don't know. <laughs> I would assume it's different in like Europe and stuff too. Yeah. yeah. So each country has that their makes own. sense. Yeah. Of yeah. And uh, yeah, and it, uh, each country has different uh, rating systems and things like that. Like, and, yeah. And you're got a kid and a uh, yeah, I'm husband. Too busy and, to watch yeah. TV. <laughs> well, I uh, I mean I work a forty to fifty hour job and I have a wife and I have about five hobbies and I still rewatch The Wire every week. So <laughs> so I wish I could say I'm not a slave to like TV, but I am. Yeah. Uh, but mostly you know TV from ten years ago. <laughs> and I watch more HBO than almost anything now. Oh, yeah? yeah, so that's what I do. Uh, do we have enough time to just bullshit? I don't think we do. Um, no, we ended about a minute and a half ago. So I did let's. It. Woo! Yeah, no, we made it. We made it the hour and a half. We bored the baby. She's asleep. Uh, yeah, Luna finally fell asleep. If you guys didn't notice that constant noise, <laughs> that was Luna has died a bit ago. Um, but is there any other topic you wanted to catch? We can go a little longer or just anything you want to say? Um, nothing. Um, Just end it off. End it on a good note. This was really cool. Yeah, good. Plains I'm glad people. you enjoyed it. Yeah, Plains yeah, People it's, it's Podcast. Always, it's always fun to tell people that I'm from North Dakota because that shocks them. Uh, living in Seattle, that shocked people. Yeah. And that's like, and when I would say Fargo, they went right to stereotypes oh, yeah. of oh, the movie. Oh, you have a wood chipper? Yeah, no, I had so many wood chipper jokes, it's not even funny. And I started telling people I was from Brainerd, which is where I was born. But that's yeah. also in the movie Fargo. So the really <laughs> hardcore people are like, oh, like the movie Fargo? Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. I thought I got away from it. Yeah, the movie part. Of so do you tell people that you're even from North Dakota? Well, or? I just say North Dakota, and then sometimes people will ask, oh, where North Dakota? Because, like, they know about it, yeah. which is pretty rare, and, like, no it confuses shit. the Mexicans. <laughs> they go, oh, North Carolina? They don't even know North Dakota. You're, you're like, sure. Yeah, or, like, Europeans and stuff. They're like, where? And I'm like, it's close to Canada. The geographical center of North America is in North Dakota. Like, yeah. I was born and as they far hear away <laughs> from the ocean as possible. Yeah, basically. I had a, I had a, a couple friends who came to mine and Leslie's wedding from Seattle, and uh, yeah, go ahead. We st I'm not drinking these, by the way, so you can still finish them. But ooh, didn't wake Luna. So I had a, I had somebody who came a couple three people 
um, two of my friends from Seattle and then one of their wives came mm-hmm. up. And this is nothing against her. I doubt they're listening. But she grew up in Seattle her entire life, so on a coast her entire life. And then they drove <laughs> to Fargo. That's a hell of for, a drive. Yeah, but they were only here for like two, two days. days. Oh, so their days. drive was the same, same amount of time. Of time. Yeah, so that's horrible. And it, she was in it. My wedding, not to toot my own horn, but my wedding was pretty fucking awesome. It was at a zoo. We got wasted at a zoo, and that's fun. I saw the picture. Yeah, it, it was really cool. Awesome. I really liked my wedding. Uh, the wife is okay, I guess, but the wedding was great. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so her, she did like this Facebook post when she was leaving. And again, I got nothing against her. I get it. But she was just like, how could anyone live there? You're landlocked. It's flat. There's nothing. There's nothing to do. And I'm like, I didn't have a chance to, like, take them out on the town. I yeah. took them to Side Street, and that's about it. And we got, like, the probably the best beer selection in town. And I knew that craft drinkers from Seattle, this is probably where to bring them. Yeah. Don't bring them a place that only has domestics. Like, actually show them we got something. But she put, like, the most Fargo, Haiti, like, Facebook oh, post. Oh, that's so sad. And to be Poor an Fargo. asshole, I was like... I hope you enjoyed the wedding. <laughs> yeah. uh, you drank for free at my wedding, by the way. But uh, anyways, so, yeah, even, uh, so what you were saying of people who ne- didn't get it from there, there's even people in America who go, yeah, they don't know. Fargo, what the fuck? Like, Where is that? Nothing. Yeah, yeah uh, our horizon is literally to when the world curves. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's not a mountain that breaks our horizon. Yeah, I saw a meme, like, like North Dakota, where you can watch your dog run away for two days. Yeah, for two days. And uh, whenever I hear a flat earther, like, oh, where's the curvature of the earth? I'm like, you don't live here, buddy. <laughs> Trust me, you can see it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'm glad you came on. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah. So um, enjoy your life. I don't know how to end this. I usually let Hasta you say luego. one more thing. Adios. But, but usually I have artists or musicians on, so they can be like, hey, buy my stuff. Oh, well. just a scuba diver. So. Uh, if you are interested in learning how to scuba dive and want to come down to Cozumel, Mexico and take some courses, you can email me. So yeah. J underscore N-O-E-L-A-N-I at hotmail.com. Boom. Look, you found a plug. We, we plugged it. All right. Uh, thank you for being on. And I'm, I'm glad it made Luna fall asleep. Yeah, she didn't scream. Yeah. No, she did good. She did great. Uh, my favorite guest, actually, is Luna. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. And there you guys have it. That was my uh, interview with Joey, Joey St. Germain. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I was really interested in that story. I think it's a fascinating story. Not a lot of people go from North Dakota to some island out in the middle of or near Mexico to teach scuba diving. I thought that was a great story. And it was. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I was. And again, Sorry for the quality of this video in the last one. As uh, as last week, my computer is on the fritz. So I've been recording everything off my phone. So if the audio is a little shoddy, that's why. All right. Next week, I'm hopefully talking to my brother-in-law, Andrew Johnson, who owns a restaurant out in Fort Ransom, North Dakota. So that's going to be pretty cool. And there we go. That was Joey St. Germain, awesome scuba diver. And... Yeah, you guys have a good week. Don't get attacked by sharks or whales or anything that she might be attacked by because you live in a landlocked area and that'd be weird. Bye.